officially arrived to our next destination. We left Morocco yesterday and our next home base is going to be in Nairobi, Kenya. But on our way down, we thought, why not hit one of the biggest bucket list items and one of the wonders of the world, the pyramids in Egypt. So we are taking a quick stop in Cairo for about four days here. And I wanna show you something really special. Here's the view from our Airbnb. Are you ready? Are you ready? There it is. The actual freaking pyramids. We're totally in shock. We've been listening to the mummy soundtrack all morning. So yesterday was a little bit of a crazy day, but not too bad. We flew from Morocco here to Cairo. We had a stop in Madrid. So it was about a two and a half hour flight, a layover, and then a five and a half hour flight or so. Um, so it was about a 10 to 12 hour travel day. Lots of long lines in the airport for customs and for security and checking in. So it was definitely a day full of queues, but the flights themselves were really easy and on time, knock on wood. So we made it. We landed at about 10.30 last night and then we got to our Airbnb at 12.30. Now it's 8 a.m. and we are gonna go do a full day of touring and I'm bringing you guys along with us. So we're gonna go see some pyramids. We're gonna go see the Nile River. The Jungle Cruise skipper in me is very excited for that, more than anything to be honest. And yeah, we're just, we're pumped. Let's go do it. Let's go explore Egypt. East of uh, Egypt, there is the, um, we have a big border with uh, Palestine and Israel. Here is Rafah and Gaza, and here is Israel, the other border with Israel. Mm -hmm. And all of that area there is Syria, Lebanon, uh, even here, here is uh, also Turkey. First stop of the day is the Saqqara Pyramid, and this is the very first pyramid ever. So, what better place to start than at the beginning? but we found in also in the other pyramids two temples there is a mercury temple and the valley temple and between these two te temples is there is a corridor between them this is limestone don't take it for The pyramid in Saqqara was built in the year 2670 BC and is estimated to be 4,693 years old, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. This pyramid was constructed out of limestone, which is a rock-solid choice on their part. As you can tell, the Jungle Cruise pods will be alive and well in this vlog. When you visit Saqqara, your ticket includes a visit inside the pyramids, unlike the pyramids in Giza where you have to purchase an additional ticket to go inside. Our tour guide Ahmed said that comparatively to Giza, the hieroglyphics are much more pigmented and colorful here in Saqqara. Don't 
That would be pretty freaky. This is what it's like when you're 6'5 and you come to Egypt. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Here, stand up. Now. Can I see how tall you actually are? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is crazy. We're in the real life mummy right now. Okay. Did it. Woo. He's eating on the job. It's <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. See, that was good. <laughs> that bread tastes amazing. We haven't eaten in two days. First meal. First meal. <laughs> That's really good. Good. Our first Egyptian meal too. And the rice is shaped like a heart. Ah. <laughs> After our delicious lunch, it was time for the main event. We were headed towards the Pyramids of Giza. First one is the highest one. From outside, from long distance, you can see the second one looks like higher. Pulling off on the side of the road to get a picture. Hey! hey. I'll show you the smoke. because it was built on an incline. It looks taller this way. Yeah, so, you know, we don't really know. All I know is that they are both gigantic and very surreal to see in person, I will say. I don't know how they built that, so. There it is, we made it. of Giza are the last remaining wonder from the seven wonders of the ancient world. They were constructed over 4,500 years ago and they were built for pharaohs of ancient Egyptian times. There are three main pyramids in the complex as well as some smaller ones. The Great Pyramid, which is the largest, is approximately 481 feet high.
I can recommend one thing for your visit to the Pyramids of Giza. It would be to take a camel ride around the pyramids. I was hesitant because I didn't know if this was a total necessity, but I am so glad we did this because it was truly the highlight of our entire day. Just make sure that you settle on a reasonable price beforehand and make sure that your specific camel guide is the only person taking photos for you, or else anyone else who jumps in to help will be expecting an extra tip. All that to say though, this was extraordinary and truly a core memory from our entire trip to Egypt. Then immediately after our camel ride, we had just enough time to run to see the Sphinx. This closes pretty early, around 4.30 or 5 o'clock, so make sure you don't miss it. This is a very big moment for me, an ex-Jungle Cruise skipper from Disneyland in 2014. Here in 2024, we have transitioned from Disneyland to the actual Nile River. We are going in denial. I'm so excited. Oh my God. <laughs> my skipper heart is like beating on my chest. So we're gonna take a little Nile dinner cruise and just enjoy. This is a full circle moment. We're on our Nile cruise. Here we go. And my cat. <laughs> I have a new friend. <laughs> Just chilling, you know. And all of this was like $15. And how much was our Uber? Two bucks. For a 30 minute drive. I love this life. I'm having a great time.
The next day, we were looking for a healthy breakfast and stumbled upon this acai bowl restaurant, which is titled the perfect blend of the words acai and Cairo. It's brilliant. However, what we didn't know was that this little restaurant was actually part of a place called CSA, which means Community Services Association. Their goal here is to foster multicultural inclusivity and provide a space for wellness, arts, education, recreation, and celebration. Originally, CSA was created to foster community for expat families, but today it is composed of both locals and international people. There were shops, restaurants, services, and tons of outdoor tables, and it was such a beautiful space. I truly could have stayed here all day long, and I think it is such a hidden gem in Cairo. To our Airbnb, which is technically inside of a hotel, and checked out the beautiful rooftop. And today was actually the first day of Ramadan, so right at 6 p.m., when everyone got to break their fast, we could hear celebrations all throughout the city. Today is our second day and our last day of touring through Cairo. We are going to visit the Citadel today and Old Cairo, so let's get into it. We began our day at this beautiful and gigantic mosque. You need to take your shoes off before coming inside, and Ahmed took some time to teach us more about how Muslims pray and how often, which is five times a day. It was incredible to learn this in such a sacred space and from someone who directly practices this religion. made a quick pit stop to the jail cells of the Citadel. Have a look. Nothing's going to jump at me, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's no one here. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Scary. I don't know if you want to see that one. Oh, God. Them 650 years, the other one just 150 uh, years ago. One of them, it's um, not just mosque, it was also like school, like university. Oh. Okay, here, here you can like open it to so change the candle. the candle yeah. and uh, and also always the children 
Yeah. See going down and That's... say wahawiya wahawi. Okay. <laughs> That's great. And what is it called again? Lovely. What is it called again? Fanus. Okay. Fanus. Beautiful. For Ramadan. You just find it in Egypt. I think you will not find it outside. <laughs> First one here is the Holy Family, Jesus, Saint Mary, and Joseph, the carpenter, and when they came to Egypt. religious theme for the day, we also went to some churches in Old Cairo. These have a lot of historical significance because it's said that the Holy Family stayed here while they were on their journey through Egypt for three whole months. Significant places were marked throughout the church, such as the well they drank water from, or where baby Jesus, Mary, and Joseph rested during their stay. driver from our tour gave us some juice that they drank for Ramadan and at 6 p.m. which is five minutes away it's breakfast or break fast because they've been fasting all day so we get to participate in our own little way with this juice. for joining me on the world famous jungle cruise. I mean our trip to Cairo, Egypt today.
I saw Antony and Cleopatra pass, Alexander, Caesar, and Napoleon paused at my feet. As my motto, I chose an Arab saying, the world fears time, but time fears the pyramid. They sing like leeches of the fields as the sun rises. It is as if in answer to a celestial call of trumpets. night Cairo. Peace out. We saw the pyramid show, the little light show that they do. It was very okay, cool, sir. very historical and had a lot of like old Hollywood accents. Yeah. Yeah. That was cute. Great way to wrap very up. Very educational. Very educational. Great way to wrap up this little mini trip and tomorrow we're on to our next stop. Nairobi. Before we go, I wanted to give you a quick tour of our Airbnb. It was 50 US dollars a night with a pyramid's view. Overall, it was a very nice stay. The unit was pretty standard, but it had everything we needed and we were in a very local area. So for the price point, it was great. And needless to say, the view was phenomenal. So we are packing up and heading out to the airport shortly, but I just wanted to do a final little recap on Cairo. I know this is a place that everybody has heard of because of the pyramids, obviously, but there are a lot of questions about it, so I'll at least give you my experience. We really loved our time here. I'm so glad that we took the time to make a little stop in Cairo and to see these pyramids because it really was one of the most surreal things I've ever seen. Obviously, you grow up hearing about the pyramids in school, in movies, everywhere, and to just see them in person is like nothing I can describe adequately in words. They're amazing. So Cairo as a whole, a lot of the local things are very affordable, so something like taking an Uber we took an Uber yesterday for about 30 to 40 minutes and it was like three US dollars, which is amazing. Food delivery, we can get things for less than $10 for two people. Um, eating at local restaurants, kind of the same deal, like 10 to $15 for two people. So that's really nice. Um, a lot of the touristy things are more normal priced. Um, as far as currency goes, they do have the Egyptian pound, which they are going through an inflation period right now um, so it was really hard to take money out of the ATMs but they do accept US cash euros they're really open to different currencies it seems like so I personally if you were coming here I would just recommend bringing your own cash from outside of the country and bringing it in because going to the ATMs was a bit of a nightmare we had some issues with that um, because we needed to take out money for our tour guides um, however, we went to an HSBC bank, put our card in the machine, and it got stuck, and they were not able to give us back the card until the next day at 10 a.m., which was kind of stressful, I would say, um, considering, you know, when you need to get out cash, you need your debit card. So, that was not a pleasant experience. They would limit it at like 4000 Egyptian pounds, which I forget what the currency exchange is, but it's... That's like less than $100. 
which is difficult when you know you're paying tour guides um, like a hundred dollars a day or whatever your rate is so um, that being said as far as safety goes so that was a big question that I got um, is about safety yes I did feel safe um, and we're staying in a pretty local area for our Airbnb as well so to all that to say like I still felt safe here our Airbnb felt safe I didn't feel like there was any like pickpocketing going on I would definitely still take precautions we took precautions um, but didn't have any issues with that I think the only main thing is that people do come up to you constantly like constantly so that is just something to be aware of you just have to keep adamantly telling somebody no you have no obligation to buy anything or give anything to anyone um, you just need to be firm if you do want to feel extra safe and have somebody guide you around i definitely would recommend the tour guides that we had they were from Triviango Holidays, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It was funny how we got in contact with them too. We usually don't do tours, we're very self-sufficient travelers, but when we were in Morocco planning our trip to Egypt, we were sitting at a cafe talking about it and we overheard the girl right next to us talking about her trip to Cairo. Um, at the exact same time we were going to book our flight here, so we stopped and had a conversation with her. Alina, she was so nice, she was from the US too, um, and she recommended her tour guide and connected me with him on WhatsApp, and we ended up setting up a tour. It was a private tour for, we did two days, one full day, one half day, and the guys were amazing. They were all named Ahmed, and um, the main guy, Ahmed, I connected with, he coordinated everything, he had great suggestions, came up with an itinerary. Um, we had everything from transportation to tickets um, to guides all included. I think the only extra things we paid for would be lunches and we did a Nile cruise excursion. Um, so he was able to bundle everything, like he booked it all for us and then we paid the tour company directly and it was great. So definitely wonderful. Again, with the cash thing, I would, if you book your tour in advance, take out cash before so you have it um, because we needed to do multiple transactions at the ATMs which was what led to our little debit card debacle which was not very fun so and just bring money for tips too but the actual experience of having the tour guides was great our guide was so knowledgeable so passionate and they just made it so easy even our driver was so kind he would stop and get us little drinks at different markets and he was a great driver <laughs> to be able to navigate the traffic here and the way people drive here is so meticulous and intricate it's so impressive they get within centimeters of each other and they are they just breeze right by I am so impressed whenever <laughs> I watch the traffic and am in a car it's amazing so um, props to everyone who can drive in Egypt if you can drive here you can literally drive anywhere in the world it's crazy we loved our experience it was just easy it was nice to be somewhere where it's very very hectic and very busy and very involved like this is a very intense um, environment especially if you're new to it I'm sure you know you get used to it um, but you know those first few days when you're here and you're adjusting it is really nice to have people who are you know on your side looking out for you who speak the language who can help you navigate so um, again, we don't do tours very often like this in this capacity, but I definitely would recommend it here. I thought it was great. So would I come back to Cairo? Maybe, probably not because I'm actually more drawn to going to Luxor and Oswan. I feel like my cup is really full here. I did exactly what we wanted to do. We did some extra things that I didn't expect and I have really good memories. And when I get to that point with a place that I've been to, sometimes I just like to cap it and leave it. Um, and see other parts of the country. So I think if we came back, like I said, we would probably do Luxor, Oswan, and probably I would love to do a Nile River cruise. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. This was a really fun adventure. We are flying off to Nairobi today in Kenya for our next home base. I'm so excited. That's another big bucket list item. And yeah, the adventure just keeps going. I'm so thankful you're here and I can't wait for our next adventure together. Until next time, bye! Don't forget your e-visa when you're going to Kenya.
No, no. We'll see. Doing that anymore. Uh, we'll see how this one pans out. This is a very long story that I'll explain in a future vlog, but when you travel to Kenya, you need to apply for an e-visa online at least three days before your flight. We made such a rookie travel mistake and completely forgot to get it. They were able to rush our application, but we missed our original flight and had to rebook for later that night. But as they say in The Lion King, Hakuna Matata. Thank you, Cairo, for the memories, and we are off on our next African adventure. We finally are going on a flight. We're going in a movie. Here we go.